Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Sumner. Today is day 14 of Advent of Code. So the map's kind of going backwards. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just a metaphor for how things have been going for me over the past few days. Yeah, if we just kind of look at my stats um, for the past couple of days, it's just been worse almost every single day, except for it was slightly better than 12 was slightly better than 11, but 13 topped them all. Um, so we're, we're definitely nowhere close to where we were on day nine. That was the only good day out of, out of the past, um, past four. It's all been downhill from there. So, uh, kind of like the toboggan, I guess. Yeah, last night was an absolute disaster. Uh, if you want a good explanation of how to actually solve the problem, I recommend going over to Joshua Wise on YouTube. He has a good explanation of how to actually solve the problem. So yeah, anyway, one milestone that I did hit was that this is the most stars that I have ever gotten on an advent of code. I kind of, you know, last year gave up after day 13. Um, because there just wasn't, I just wasn't motivated. Day 14 was too hard. Um, hopefully that doesn't <laughs> bode poorly for today. And day 2018, I, you know, I just didn't, I just kind of gave up at some point. I think, um, I'm not sure why, but this is the first time that I've, you know, been so consistent up to this point. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. Besides the fact that it's just been a total bloodbath for the past three days. But the hope is get a little bounce back today. I got some good advice from Joshua that uh, his, his mo motto is that um, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So unfortunately, the other thing that's fast is not being stupid, which is hard for me. So... But yeah, the goal is just not to, is just to like find a solution um, without having to look too much at the internet. Okay, so we're a minute out. So while I'm solving, I probably won't be talking too much, but afterwards I'll, I'll go through my solution, explain it. You know, hopefully it's not three hours from now or four hours whenever I solved the one last night. Um, hopefully it's more like on the order of minutes, um, than hours. Almost there. Bitmask system and its initialization, you don't have the correct number. Initialization program, either, oh gosh. Bit hacking, uh, yay. Values and memory addresses are both 32-bit unsigned integers. Like mem8 equals 11 or write value 11. One while well, you one one bitmask is always given at the start of the 30 a string of 36 bits significant most of it must be here okay current bitmask mask is applied this uh, immediately up before they're into memory okay Um, so we override with whatever the mask is. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Okay. 
what is the sum of all values left in, in memory after complete? So actually, let's put that in here. So we'll just keep the memory in a dictionary. I think that'll be fine. Um, First one, and then this lines. Then black B plus first group equals um, that. What the heck? Why is this not working? Oh, shoot, because I need to escape this and that, of course. Okay, cool, that looks good. Um, for each store, then... Oh wait, no, it's not a byte array. Um, oh well. Um, so this isn't quite right, but um, oh shoot, um, location comma val. Okay, cool. So then basically what we need to do on the mask here is
Oh, um, shoot. Um, Um, so So, uh, print x. So when we see a zero and we want to force it to be a zero, so if it's a zero, then we do the and mask. Equals and. No, then, then we don't actually have to do anything. Then it'll automatically be a zero. If it's a one, then... Shoot, I'm printing too much stuff. This is not good, guys. What? Oh, there we go.
Okay, so so basically, we're taking this here. Um, one o one one, and x x o x one o o one. So so the operation here uh, is just going to be one o one one. Or no, and x and one one o one. Okay, so so when we see an o, if x does not equal o, then what we do is we and mask and. Or equals one um, let's do That seems like it's actually working. Oh my gosh. Oh. Wait, there's multiple masks? Oh. Got it.
in Okay. Otherwise Don't know if that's right, but Okay, as I figured. Okay, so, so if it's an and, then I think we're, Okay, so my or mask isn't working. Oh, it's always zero. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, so now that's the same, but... So if it's... If it's one o oh, one one x x one, make that a zero x, then it's one o oh, one one. So it's just if we see a one, then we add a one to the or. But that's not what happened. So we print the line. So the line is this. So if it's if it's a if it wait, is this supposed to be equal zero? So if it equals zero. Um, then to the and mask, we have to add a zero. But if it's a, if it's a one, if it is a one, 
If it's not equal to a zero, then we add a one. We leave it alone, right? If it's a, if it is a one, uh, I mean, might as well just try it. Uh, there's no, no, no point in. Oh my gosh. Okay. That was bad. How did I do that correctly? Guys, that was amazing. Mm. Okay, this is actually a problem that I can probably understand. Okay. Um before we screw this up. Okay, so here, basically, I'm going to have to construct it every single time, which is fine. I'm pretty sure. So So basically, um, this is a count kermas count x.
Okay, um, and then what we do here is mask If the so we always are going to do this. Let's see here. So if it's a zero, <sighs> this is the wrong direction, I think. Um, Oh, we have to apply the mask. Darn it. Um...
14 seconds. Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. I think Easton is going to beat me on this one. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's go back. What am I supposed to do here? So the result is that address, then apply the mask. I see. Okay. So then what do I do here? If, if, Okay, so if it's zero or one, if the current mask is zero, then then p plus equals cl, else p plus equals if it's a 
if it's a one No idea. Um, so Okay, let's let's screw it. Um, this is a. I don't know how I'm supposed to apply the bit mask with the X's in it. You know. So that's the location, that's the bits. N equals
okay, not not awful. Uh, pretty awful. Pretty freaking awful. Uh, another bit hacking problem. Okay, so that wasn't great, but at least it, it did kind of work. Um, well, I mean, it did work eventually. Let's just clean this up and then I'll explain what's going on. Uh, hey, McPanda, welcome to, to the stream. Good job. So, yeah, this is a bit hacking problem. Let's, let's first of all add this to my, my library effectively. Um, it seems really useful. So this will print out the bits of, a, of an integer. Um, uh, I don't think so, McPanda. I think it's because like, um, I, I guess kind of, I, I just don't know if it's the right endian. Um, oh, it looks like it is the right Indian. It's just, oh, what I needed was the pad. Um, This is what you don't get. So, um, and then if we pad, pad this with. I'm sure there, you know, I can use string formatting for this, but I think this is fine. Um, okay, so this was kind of a mess. Um, My regex matching at least was useful. Um, regex is just easier, easiest thing for me to, to think about. So that's why I tend to use it. So um, let's see here. What's going on here? So do that. Let's go through this and, and explain what's going on. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out what the problem's asking. So, so the idea here is that we have a program that has a bunch of masks in it. Um, and these masks basically indicate how you're supposed to mutate your, your number. Honestly, I think doing this stringly would have been maybe easier than the bit hacking that I did, to be perfectly honest. But the bit hacking worked, so I'll explain what I did. So here's the mask. X is, basically that just means use whatever the identity is for your... So, okay, first of all, so there's ones and zeros, and whenever you see a one or a zero, you're supposed to to replace it in the, in the value. Like, so it's just supposed to be an override. So, 
So I basically broke this up into two pieces. You have an and piece and you have an or piece. Um, and the idea is, so uh, the or is to handle the one case. Um, so if the mask has a one in it, then the or will have a one in that place as well. Um, and then that'll automatically override because whatever is up here, it'll it'll just be one, right? Then the same thing here. So down here we have uh, the value. Um, so so for for zeros, uh, this is going to be an and to force it to always be zero. So we so I, I basically broke it up into two different things where you have one mask for the and, one mask for the or. The trick to it is if you if it's not a one and you're um, then we have to use the or identity. So it's just a, it's just a zero. That's just a zero. So, so or is pretty easy. If it's a, if it's a, if, if the mask is a one, then we add a, a one to the or mask. And basically all, so what this is doing here, um, we're, we're setting it to the identity, um, in this case zero, and then we're, uh, binary left shifting it by one. So at this point, or mask. So if or mask is zero, then it would be zero zero, and then we're oring it with one, and then so this would be zero one, and then the next iteration we're gonna ink, uh, shove it up again, and it's gonna be zero one zero, and then you know if uh, if it's not a one, if it's either a zero or an x, then it'll just add another zero. So um, the the way that and works is that the only time that we care about is if it is um, so automatically whenever you binary left shift, it'll add a zero. Um, and we only want to keep the zero if x is um, a zero. So if it is a zero, so like in this case, we have a zero. Um, and in this case, we want to keep it. We want to keep it around in the bitmap. Otherwise, we want to turn it into a one because that's the and identity. Uh, basically, the key is that um, if we have um, so this is um, five and if we if we then you know, or this with O one O, then we get seven because this is just gonna be one one one. If we and this, we're gonna get zero because none of these line up. If I did O O one for example, then it'd be one because we this zero overrides this one. So that's all this is doing. This is constructing two bit masks whenever we see a new mask line. And like I said, the regex matching was pretty nice. Um, otherwise, so if we're at a memory access uh, instruction, so like these guys over here, then what we do, I. I also screwed up and I thought that it was a binary number, like the value was a binary number because these are both binary, um, but it's not, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely decimal. And I could have, you know, just read and seen that it was that. So um, anyway, in the case that it is a memory access, basically pull out the location of the memory access and the value of the memory access, we convert both to ints. Let's clean this up, map int across this whole thing. Um, and then we are going to use the and mask and the or mask accordingly um, on the value. Um, 
and just assign that to the memory location. And then I basically I'm using a dictionary to store my memory um, because it's just easiest to do that. Um, and then summing over the values in the dictionary. So it's, it's uh, I could have used an array instead of that, but then I would have to resize the array and that would have been really annoying. So using a, a dictionary for the memory seems really, really, really nice. Um, let me check my, what was my incremental time today? Another 20 minutes. So that's really, really bad. Um, I think that's it for part one. The trick it, that I used was just changing the and and or mask. Um, the other way to do this is if you do this is to do this stringly, and that would work too. Um, basically, you would convert your uh, value to a string and then replace um, any ones and zero. Like you would, you'd zip it up with you. You compare it to the the mask and any place where you see a something that's not an X, you just do a replacement and then you convert it back to an int. That would work too. Um, but this is, I think, just a little bit cleaner. Okay, so McPanda in chat said that he's he just did the uh, the stringly typed version, which is probably maybe easier to think about, to be perfectly honest. So the next thing here is part two. So what part two has is that instead of operating on the this thing, which is the the value, we're operating on on the the address, and this is where not having it stringly typed was um, a problem because this one is fundamentally just easier stringly typed. Um, so effectively, what happens is that your mask, all the X's also matter. So like the O's and the ones, like it, so so basically there's only an or step. Um, like if you have a zero in your mask, it just doesn't override if it's a one. It just keeps the value of what's ever in your address. So that's just an, a binary or operation. So one zero or one or zero would be one, zero or zero would be zero. Um, and then zero or one, and then one would be one. So uh, that's handling O and one, but X is the different case here. And in, in this one, it's, um, uh, you, you always override with X. And then basically what you do is you, you do all the permutations of, of the different uh, X's of the different values that you can have in each X. So zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, right? And then it's the same thing. You just sum the stuff that's after you complete. So uh, yeah, basically um, there's always gonna be a mask first. So this is just matching against a mask line if they're, and then setting the current mask to that. Um, and then anytime we have a memory access, we pull out the location and the value. And then for, for the memory access, what we do is um, I am first of all calculating, this is basically the new memory location. And then, so let's get rid of that. That's not necessary here. Um, and then X is um, access location. And so the idea here is that we, uh, I'm using zip. Zip only works if both lists are, well, it, does, it works if both lists are different sizes, but for our purposes, we care that it, it ha they have to be the same size or else you're gonna lose some bits, um, which is why I need this, this pad bits thing. And what matters is what CM is. If, if it's a zero, then we use whatever was in the address. If it's a one, then we use a one. And if it's an X, we use an X. So uh, that's all that this is doing here. Um, I mean, there's obviously cleaner ways of doing this. A McPanda in chat had a really crazy one-liner that, I mean, it works, but 
Um, and the, the other way to do this is a, you know, it's, it, it is a dictionary. This is a, just a dictionary. So um, then what I do here is I use iterTools.product. So iterTools.product is a really nice, oh shoot. So Python. So it basically gives you every single combination of one, two, so like, for example, let's just say one, two, three, right? And repeat equals two. Let's just go with something really small. It gives a generator, so you need to convert it. And so this will, this will give you every pairing of two of these elements. So one to one, one to two, one to three, then two with one, two with two, two with three, and then three with one, three with two, three with three. Um, if we did repeat three, then it's a lot more, right? Um, one, 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 two, one, one, three. Um, and this is a good way. It, it basically gives you like a crank, like, you know, those, those things that uh, have the count people and you just click on them. It's like that, except in code. Um, for my purposes, what I did is zero one, right? Um, because that gives me all of the combinations of zeros and ones that I could replace each one of these X's with. So that's why I'm counting the number of X's in the, in the result. And that'll, um, so this is my result, right? If I count the number of X's, now I have two different things. And I'll use iterTools.product for, for both of these to, to identify which, which numbers um, to use. Let's do this and then just keep everything strings pretty much. So, so that's what this is doing. And then for each one of these um, bit combinations, I'm constructing a access location. Um, and then going through each of the bits of the of the result. If it's a zero or a one, then that's just what I add to the real location. Otherwise, I'm going to use the bit combo um, at i and increment i. So this is this is basically saying like if we print out print bit combo, for example, it's a lot of stuff, right? But um, We'll have one, one, one. So I just am indexing into this array with I. So I'll use, uh, for the first X, I'll use this one. For the second X, I'll use this. For the third X, I'll use this one. Um, it's not the cleanest thing ever, but it works. Um, and it's pretty obvious what it's doing. So I, I think it's fine. Let's do that. And then the last thing is, I use that value to index into my memory and uh, set, and in this case, we just, just use the value that's defined up here. So that's part two. Um, so what went wrong? Um, well, I thought first of all that the, that the, the value is binary, so that was stupid. That, I, it, don't, it didn't really waste that much time, maybe, 30 seconds, 15, 30 seconds, something like that. Um, I also didn't realize that there were multiple masks. But once I figured it out, like I was able to move the code in fairly quickly into the for loop. Still probably wasted a minute. Uh, yeah, so those were the two mistakes on part one. I guess I should just look at the input. Let's let's force myself to to do that actually. Okay, so after getting the file, let's just uh, let's just force myself to do this. So if I do get input fourteen now, now it'll force me to look at it. I like this. I like this. I'll at least <laughs> I'll at least look at the input now. 
Um, so that, that'll solve one of the issues that I had. What else went wrong? Honestly, I, I just spent too much time not doing extremely tight. Like I, I being cute with the whole like bit, bit hacking and the bit hacking isn't even maintainable. It's just like annoying to look at, like, like who wants to maintain this or like ever look at it again. So honestly, this was pretty good. You know, I didn't screw it up. Like that's that's an achievement for me. Um, I just didn't read the problem, and like I, I screwed up a few things. Like I got the and mask or mask. You know, got got those a little bit wrong, but yeah, I I did figure it out. Um, okay. I al oh also it is important to not use to an elsif here um, because it it's. I think that's what I tried at one point. Um, cause these are not mutually exclusive things and you need to, to make sure that you're updating the and, and the or mask if necessary. Okay. Was there anything that really went wrong here? I mean, just the fact that I wasn't stringly typed in part one was really the key that screwed me. Once I once I converted it, it was fine, and just you know, I just had to fiddle with like where I should do the product, where I should do uh, computing the the actual location of the memory to access, and I had a yeah things I didn't read it well enough still. I didn't really understand what I was doing. Oh, I couldn't, I wasn't applying the, I was, I was at some point, I was applying the ones and zeros to the mask and then just ending it with the value, but that doesn't work. Um, that's when I realized stringly typed was the way to go. This was still pretty terrible. Kind of unacceptable. Oh well. I'm like simultaneously like very disappointed in today, but like also thank goodness it wasn't as bad as yesterday or the day before or the day before. Anyway, back to here. I don't know. I I, I guess I'll just have to look back at stream because there were a couple of other dumb mistakes that I made. Yeah, I kind of forgot about the whole, um, you know, slow is fast, or not slow is fast, slow is smooth, smooth is fast thing. I really have been enjoying Joshua's stream, so if you go over there on YouTube and follow him, or follow his channel, subscribe to his channel, um, he has a lot, well, he's a lot better th at this than I am, and he has some really good explanations, so... Um, I definitely recommend it. Okay. I think that's it for today. Uh, I've annotated all the stuff. Um, and, um, yeah, not, not, not the best day. At least, at least it was respectable. Like I, I solved the problem. I was slow as, as normal, but like I solved the problem without having to like, um, copy and paste code from random websites. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, I think I'm going to call it here. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you find this at all entertaining or educational, and also go over and check out Joshua's channel for uh, better um, Advent of Code content. Um, he's doing it in Lua, which sounds, and it's pretty cool. Um, and he does much better than me, obviously. So that's it for today. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Oh yeah. Come over and follow me on Twitch so that you can, um, uh, so that you can watch, watch me, watch me, watch me burn, um, tomorrow night. And, uh, yeah. See you all later.